I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. Resistance Day in Slovenia, marking the country's proud history of resisting invaders. An occasion for many to vent their anger at what they see as invasive measures by the European Union forcing tough austerity. Slovenia's new center-left government, which insists it won't be the next Eurozone bailout target, is under pressure as it faces 7 billion euros in bad loans by the country's three leading and partially state-owned banks. Tackling the crisis, the government plans public sector wage cuts and tax increases. This as unemployment hovers over 13%. The European Central Bank is again under pressure to reassure the markets with new calls for euro bonds. Skeptics see Slovenia as further evidence the single currency is fundamentally flawed by imposing a one-size-fits-all monetary policy. Others see Slovenia as another example of a country that needs to carry out long-due reforms that would have been forced with or without a single currency. Now wired into this edition of the network is here at the European Parliament in Brussels, Moitza Kleva, MEP from Slovenia, who's part of the S&D party group and is on the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. In Washington, Jeffrey Anderson, Senior Director for European Affairs at the Institute of International Finance, that's the Global Association of Financial Institutions. And also here at the Parliament, Jolt Darvash, Research Fellow at the Brussels Economic Think Tank, Brugel. Here's a question to all of you, uh, starting with Moitza. Will Slovenia need a bailout? Will it become the sixth Eurozone country to get a bailout? Commissioner Ali Rehn says he won't rule it in or rule it out. I really don't think so. I really think that uh, the last analysis, uh, analysis from the OECD, from the European Commission, about the macroeconomic imbalances in our, my country are showing a different result, the result that is not calling for a bailout. Okay, well, wait a minute, though. Uh, Jeffrey, the, the, the country's debt just got reduced to junk by Moody's. Come on, there's got to be a likelihood that there would be a bailout. Well, I think this is going to depend on the actions that the government takes going forward. Um, and with respect to the downgrade, um, it's important to note that last week uh, the government was able to issue $3.5 billion worth of bonds, five-year and ten years. And what they're going to need to do is lay the basis for um, strong confidence going forward. Okay, but that, that $3.5 billion worth of uh, new credit, that only buys some time, doesn't it, Scholt? I also agree with the view that uh, macroeconomic fundamentals in Slovenia does not really justify a need for a bailout. Yet, if there is increased market pressure, then certainly Slovenia can be the sixth country that requested such a help. Okay, now how about, uh, the, how about the economy? Half the economy is state-owned. So far, Slovenia has failed to give a plan to sell off at least some of those assets. Do you think there's really the political will to do it, and you need to do this by the end of the year, Moitza? Yeah, we, we know that we, we are facing a serious, uh, Slovenia is facing a very serious situation, and actually all the things that we've done in the last uh, 12 months, the labor market reform, the pension reform, and now with uh, dealing with, uh, seriously with privatization, and this, the, is really telling us how the, how the situation is in Slovenia, how, how strongly we are, we are concerned about the situation in Slovenia. Okay, well, obviously, you're speaking on behalf of the government because you are part of the governing coalition. That's why you're rather um, uh, looking at it in a positive light. But let's, no, let's no, go I'm, over to I'm Jeffrey. I'm speaking in my own name as a member okay. of the European Parliament right. from Slovenia. <laughs> okay. Jeffrey, let's go to you, though. What about this crony capitalism that's been going on for years? How are they going to fix that? Well, I think uh, to push ahead on privatization is really the most credible way to do this. Slovenia would benefit from a substantial increase in foreign direct investment, and I think um, there are good companies there that would certainly be attractive. There's an awful lot of capital flowing around. around. Okay, Jolt, but what but if the government's going to have to demonstrate the will to do this? Okay. Jolt, what if the government fails to pull off enough reforms by the end of the year, and if they need a bailout, will we see some haircuts like we saw over in, uh, in Cyprus, for example? Not really. Uh, first of all, the banking system in Slovenia is much smaller relative to GDP than it was in Cyprus. In Cyprus, it was more than seven times. In Slovenia, it's, it's less than two times. 
And also, secondly, the public debt in Slovenia is much smaller. This year it will exceed, uh, exceed 60%. With the bank bailout, it may reach to 75%, but it's nothing comparable to Greece or Cyprus. Okay, well, let's talk about this debt. 7 billion euros in non-performing loans in the banking sector. That's about 20% of the country's total annual output. How are you going to clean that up without a bailout, Moitza? We are just uh, starting with, uh, with the series of uh, reforms dealing with the privatization and the recapitalization of banks. We just established, uh, Slovenia just established the bad bank as, a, as one of the solutions. We, the reforms were passed in the last six, eight months. I think for till the end of the year, we are quite on a safe side. We are, we are just uh, sending to Brussels in these days the national reform program with really concrete proposals about how to avoid the bailout for Slovenia. Okay, uh, Jeffrey, do you think this is an example of a one-size-fits-all European Central Bank policy that is victimizing yet another Eurozone member? No, I don't. I mean, I think, I think we, have a particular, uh, we have a particular banking sector model in Slovenia um, that is really not workable in the post Lehman Brothers era. So I think part of the need is to clean up the banks and to recapitalize them. The bank asset management company is the first start on that, but the banks really need to be recapitalized. Okay, Zolt, uh, related to that, there, there is talk, again, new talk about euro bonds, this being a way to tide over Slovenia, among other countries. Do you think that argument is becoming stronger now? Uh, I think there would be a lot of rationale for euro bonds, but not because of Slovenia, but because of the whole architecture of the monetary union. If you have a single monetary policy, then a common issuance of bonds would largely strengthen the whole area. But I think Slovenia is not a major issue in this regard. Okay, now nobody's beating up on the ECB at the moment, but uh, Moitza, let me pitch this to you. Some blame years of this easy credit under the euro as creating a bubble that burst. Do you see it that way? No, we do have a problem with the banking system. That, that's absolutely, but it's not a problem from yesterday. It's a problem for the last 20 years. But the euro, the euro kept interest rates very low. People were able to get a lot of cheap money at the time. I know, but our situation is uh, somehow so so difficult at the moment that we cannot really benefit from that. Let's, let's go to a final question. Do you think that without the euro, Slovenia would be better off today or worse off today? Jeffrey. Well, it's, you know, that's one of those can you get there from here questions. And I think to not have it now would involve a tremendous and very painful transition. So I can't imagine that, it, that that's a sensible public policy choice for any government that's part of the euro now. Okay, Jolt, how do you see that? Do you think uh, the ECB's policy, if without that, without the, the, the reins on the Slovenian government, that they might be able to solve this question, this issue, more freely, without the euro? Uh, Slovenia had a managed, highly managed exchange rate system already before the euro. So if Slovenia would have not joined, probably it would, it would have a fixed rate like Bulgaria or, or, or Latvia uh, has. And therefore, the same problems would have emerged. Slovenia did not have monetary independence. And yes, I think that the low interest rate environment contributed to credit booms throughout the monetary union and those in those countries that had fixed exchange rate to the euro. Okay. Uh, Moitza, you've got the last word here. Do you think without the euro, things would have been easier to solve now? No, I think that it's good that we are in the Eurozone and a member of the euro because we are really a small economy, basically mostly dealing with uh, the export and we are depending on what is going on in the Eurozone and all, or, all around Europe. So I really think it's a good thing that we are in the Euro. Okay, Moitza, thank you very much. That's all the time we've thank got you. for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Moitza Kleva, Jeffrey Anderson, and Joel Darvash. I'm Chris Burns. And until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.